Hey guys and welcome to Outward. Outward is a single player open world survival RPG. It's a game you guys asked me to try out for a while now because of its uh, survival aspects in it and not only that but also because of its combat and the way it actually plays and it is a lot of fun. We tried it actually out the other night on a stream and after about three to four hours, wow, it, it is actually a lot of fun. And I wanted to do a couple of videos on it. So we're going to do the first video where I'm kind of go through what I know about the game. And you guys, of course, feel free in the comments to fill in the blanks and correct anything I'm getting wrong or I remember incorrectly, which I hope is not going to be too much. And then anything after that, we'll see how much you guys want to see. I mean, it would be great to actually play it for at least two or three episodes on the channel and then go from there. Anyway, I hope you guys are going to have a good time. So let's see what it's all about. All my life, I've lived within the safety of Sirzo, spared with the brutality of the world outside. But Life in our eye is never that easy. For all the safety that my tribe provides, our laws are harsh. We are judged not as individuals, but as bloodlines. The failures of my bloodline weigh heavy on me. My grandmother brought ruin to our tribe long ago, bringing a heavy blood price upon my family. We've paid the debt caused by her actions ever since. I joined the expedition across the sea with my old friend Izan, hoping the money made there would be enough to clear my debts. This was a mistake. I'm lucky to still be breathing after our ship hit rocks on the return voyage. Now I have no choice but to pick myself up yet again and face the wild, untamed land outside the walls. I must carve out my own future or die trying. And that is how our character ends up here on the shore. Now, as I said, I've played the beginning a few times actually to try different things out. And there's a few things I can share with you and there's a certain way I will start the game. If that is the best way or the correct way, I don't know. I have no idea. That's just the way I feel comfortable about it. So your character has an inventory, which is weight limited. So you have in currently only money in your pocket and that's it. You have some filters here that you can sort your inventory by or you can show everything. Um, you have different categories here. You have inventory, you have equipment and the stats that you currently have. Then your basic stats like health, stamina and mana. You can see health and stamina down here on the bottom left, the red and the yellow circle. But mana is still gone. Like there's no mana until you do a quest apparently, which I haven't done yet myself. So there you go. I haven't done it all. And some food and drink. And sleep. So you do need to eat, you do need to drink, and otherwise I think if you get too tired or too thirsty or too hungry, you get some bad effects on you, which could really impact the way you do your, your combat. And then you have the temperature gauge here, which obviously you can get too cold or too hot, and that can then turn into a negative effect. Um, if you're burning up, you get very thirsty, I would assume. And if it's too cold, you're more susceptible to uh, frost damage, for example. But you have positive buffs as well, which would show up here. Like if you uh, put an, a buff on you that increases your stat, you will see that there as well. Then you have your crafting screen where you can free craft. Now, these are all the recipes you can craft from your inventory where you don't need a station. The other recipes might be requiring a station and they wouldn't show up here. So you have to go to like the, the kitchen to the cooker to cook certain specific things then over here we have um, quick slots you have eight quick slots a QER and one to five and in them you can either assign one of your skills and the game is all about skills and unlocking more skills for specific weapons or general skills like this kick it's just a general skill it lets you kick a guy and these skills here are specific to daggers pistols and a lantern for example and we can click here and say oh we want to have another skill in here or we can click in here and say we want an item in here. So if you have bandages here or potions or anything that gives you a buff, you might want to put that in there and take it like just before a fight or after a fight or mid fight or whichever way suits you best. Then we of course have also our journal which shows us our current minor quests or side quests and the major quests as well. And that's pretty much it. We can go more into details about everything as we play. Um, we picked up a torch now which gives you light. This game gets really, really dark at night. So you're always better off having a torch on you. But right now we don't really need it. It's bright enough, but you can see it's added to the weight. But the moment we equip it, the weight is not counted in the pocket. So, which is actually really nice. So you can shift uh, things around between your pockets, but your backpack and your person to save some weight where needed. And we have some berries here. We're gonna pick those up. We're gonna use them later. And here we have our first outfit. There we go. Now, because of the weight restrictions, I wouldn't recommend picking up any more right now, except for things like that, the seaweed. Now, all of these things that you saw just now are placed intentionally, so you will always see them when you start the game, but there is things like chests and uh, hollow tree trunks, 
and junk piles which all have random loot except for one which we're going to see now in a second this game rewards exploration so what we're supposed to do is uh, go straight up here and talk to our friend which we're going to do in a second but first we explore a little bit down here and as you can see you can gather oh this is actually a clean water stream oh that is awesome so we might as well drink actually i didn't even realize that i always thought it was salt water because the salt water is there by the sea as well that's pretty cool so right here we have a harpoon we can pick up and we can either sell it we can't reach that item on the other side we get there in a second we can either sell it or we can use it uh, to catch fish which you can see in little schools or skulls whatever they're called here on the side um, there is none here but in general there would be a couple of fish splashing in the water and you can use your harpoon then to catch them there's a bandage here and here's our friend actually now the berries you can eat them raw absolutely and they will give you some hunger back so right now for example our hunger is at 77 so we could eat them raw or we could cook them but they still give us the same amount of food cooked they just last longer you can see a durability bar here that decreases over time and then one of your berries will go but let's just eat one of them and that should raise our hunger now uh, up there you go to 84 which is great and again if you want you can put it in here and cook it and there you go and then you can eat the cooked one it still gives you the same amount of food it just lasts a bit longer in your inventory there you go now this bed roll is something you're going to be using now in a second and um, we we'll get some bread first and then we're going to talk to izan hey there where are we izan the last thing i remember was our ship hitting a rock we're not far from home you can see the lighthouse from here can't you um i don't know can we i can't <laughs> So we're close to home anyway. Um, Ito made it out alive too, whoever Ito is. Um, thanks, uh, Ilat. He's a Kazite. He was born on a ship. So we have three survivors in Go total. Go ahead and sleep in one of the extra bedrolls. So he's just basically offering us to um, take a nap and to get some rest. And we're going to do that in a second. But first, as I said, exploration is always rewarded. Let's have a little look around and see what we have. So there's more berries down there and let's go to the beach now while all of the junk piles and all that thing you find is random loot there is one junk pile right here around the corner which seems to always have the same loot for me no matter how many times i looked at it and started the game just to check that particular one it always had the same loot so it has a flint so you can light a campfire it has three wood so you can make a campfire and it has a linen cloth and three silver we can make a torch if we want and a club which would be a weapon and some light if we want to or we can make a quarter stuff if we want so we do have the materials to actually make a weapon right away but we already found one but i'm assuming if you don't find one you can craft it from there or we can make a campfire kit the bee you see here is a very nice side product from gathering uh, berries and it's actually very nice to take them as you can see we're wet because it's raining we have a cold weather defense deduction of minus two, so penalty and frost resistance penalty, but our fire resistance is up because it's raining. But if we eat one of those, this insect protects you from the cold. So we eat it. And now you can see cold weather defense is up. Cold weather defense plus 15. We're gonna pick up the seaweed. There's one more here and one more further down the beach. And then over there to the left where you can see the arch, that is actually where you're gonna get your first experience, combat experience if you want to. You, of course, can skip all that and just go and lie down and continue with the game. Now, over here, we have our first weapon weapon. The harpoon is used for fishing, but we can see here the machiri is also a weapon we can use. It only does 12 damage. It's also a bit faster than what we have, but let's try this one, actually. Then we're going to go over here to the left, and there we have another tool. Again, let's drink some clean water to make sure that we're always topped up. And this is a mining tool. Now, this is actually a proper tool. So we need that in our inventory. Similar, the harpoon is both. All of these can be used as weapons, I suppose, as well. You can see this is 17 damage. It's actually heavier than that. So we probably should be fighting with that. And it has an impact of 25. That is actually really good. We should be able to fight with that. Nice. It's very slow, though, as you can see. Oh, cool. We can shove with it as well. So you have a left attack. And then you have a middle mouse button attack. And uh, then with right, you just block, which is actually pretty cool. There's one hyena. Let's hope we only aggro the one. Okay, he's not. Oh, is he coming? 
Excellent, yeah. I just don't want to get both. So he will attack, and what you do is you wait for him to attack, and then you wait your moment, because the moment you open up to attack, he will attack you as well. And you can see, we got hit twice. We got infected, and we lost nearly half our health. So the best thing is to probably just kick him in the, in, in the head now. There we go. And then attack him straight away. There we go. And that's it. He's down. Now, what that impact is about... Let's loot him, actually. Okay, we're gonna get some height, which is great. And I think we're bleeding. Are we bleeding? No, we're actually not bleeding. Um, this just says, with a bandage, we can heal ourselves to get a little bit of health. But we're gonna keep that bandage. I think we're gonna be okay. Let's actually use the machete, because I'm used to the machete a little bit more. I know it's a machete, it's just the way I say it. And um, we can fight with that if we want. It's a bit weaker, but it's much faster. Okay. Nice, we kicked him. Okay, let's take it easy. You see the white line below his body? That is kind of what the impact has to do with. There we go. Ah, he bit us again. Ah, kicking him kind of throws him off guard and then we can do a multiple attacks on him. So, oh, I thought he was down. So the white bar below is, I think, where the impact comes in. Now, overall, the white bar, if it's down to 50%, you stagger someone. They kind of fall back a bit, like they get they stumble. And you have a window of doing a good attack. If you get it down to zero, they, they get knocked down. And then it takes a while for them to get back up. And then the white bar goes to full again and you have to do it again. So it's kind of throwing them off balance. But I think this whole impact thing on weapons, impact 12, is how much you impact that white line. We're actually bleeding at the moment, I think. Let's see if we can see that as an effect. No, we're diseased. We're infected. We're losing health. 3% health per minute. So, okay, let's hurry up and let's get out of here. There is one tree trunk here, though. We want to check out. Excellent. It actually has some boots and a helmet and it has four cloth, which is actually pretty cool. And um, because two cloths allow us to make more bandages. So we can actually craft them here. I can show you this. So we can either select it or we can put the cloth ourselves manually in here if we want to. Or we can select uh, bandages from it. There we go. Excellent. Beautiful. Oh, and you can also dodge, by the way. If you press space, you dodge. But dodging takes a lot more stamina than blocking, of course. And um, so I wouldn't use it as frequent possibly not at the moment anyway so is there anything else i forgot to pick up no okay so let's go lie down let's go for our nap and here's the interface for resting so what can happen when you sleep the reason you have guard there is <laughs> you can get ambushed while you sleep and then wake up apparently in some bandit camp that hasn't happened to me before but when you die which is not really death um death in this game is more like you've passing out i suppose so we got killed by some hyenas at some point um during the stream and what happened then is we woke up in the hyena cave they actually dragged me into their cave and i had to break out i had to get out and then run away so you don't lose any of your items as far as i know though i'm convinced i lost some of my money at some point but um you could go sleep on a bread roll um outside in the middle of nowhere and then all of a sudden wake up in a band camp, as far as I heard. Like, so you have to be very careful. And that's what the guard option is there for. So you guard for an hour, maybe, or two, replenish some of your health. But um, we're going to sleep quickly just to trigger the next part of the story. Unconsciousness comes quickly, and you dream of being ensnared in something. With a yelp, you jump out of your bed. Relief floods you as you recognize uh, where you are. You're back in your old bed at home, the lighthouse in Sierzo. Isa must have brought you back to your family's lighthouse. Only your aching body tells you that the shipwreck you suffered was not a nightmare. So Isan brought us back to our house while we passed out on the mat. And that's how we ended up here. Now we have some beginner stuff here actually. That's really good. We have some boots and we have some attire here. I think that attire is better than what we have. So this is what we're currently wearing. And that is the tattered attire which has higher defenses and more resistance. Um, excellent. We can put that on. The boots, I think, are exactly the same. Yeah, so we can leave them on. Now, we are encumbered. That's why we're moving so slow. But that's not going to be a problem for much longer. As we get down here, we can see a backpack. Oh, it's a satchel. It's our first backpack. So you can equip it straight away. And we're still over encumbered. We're still encumbered because we have to move things into our backpack. So the idea is usually in your pocket, you keep what you really need very handy because your backpack is something you can take off. 
So you take it off, you fight somebody where you're very agile without your backpack. You put the backpack on. You, you're, of course, heavier now, even if you're not encumbered. And it means things like that, you slow down. I mean, if you look at the dodge roll, and even though I'm still encumbered, look at the dodge roll without the backpack. It's much faster. So the backpack is a hindrance during combat, of course. In the beginning, not really, but later on, of course, it could be. So you always want to be able to take it off. So hence, you kind of in your pocket only want the bare necessities like, you know, some bandages, anything you need when you're not having your backpack on. Yeah, like your, your pickaxe maybe and your harpoon and your bandages and that's it. So we also have a storage here in our house where we're going to dump everything in right now because we don't really need anything on us, um, except the money, maybe. So we're going to leave the seaweed here. We're going to leave everything in here. And, oh, look at that. We actually have some starting items as well in our... Um, oh, wow, and they're random. This is actually the first time I see a cooking pot and an improvised bedroll in my starting stash. So that's actually three items you get as random. So we got the gray garb the improvised bedroll and the cooking pot. Let me actually take the the guy berries and show you something. So the game is um, very interesting with the way crafting works. Like, yeah, you can find a recipe and learn it. But if you don't know the recipe, you can still craft the items. Um, so let me show you. So for example, we can see here Garberry Jam. Garberry Jam, I know the recipe for it because it's one of the first you learn. Um, and we're going to find it in a second. Let's pick up the scrap here and the flint. And here's another improvised bread roll. So we're going to pick that up. And here we have a recipe for Cheers or Chevich. Um, we're going to learn it because we just found it. So let's learn it. But we don't know the recipe for this Garberry. But if we put four berries in here... And craft, we are getting um, a Garberry jam. And the recipe has been added. So we now learned the recipe for Garberry jam. You saw it appearing here. So even though we didn't know it, we learned it just now by experimentation. Of course, now we can use that Garberry and bread to make Garberry tartine, which this. So this Gabri gives you 150 food, but we can turn it into three bread slices, which each give 125 food. Now, food does rot slower in general in your stash. I don't know if it's slower or stops. I think it's just slower, a lot slower than in your inventory. So, but right now we don't really need any of this in our inventory. I don't even think we need food in our inventory. So let's leave the house and let's enter the village. And we're surprised by a welcoming committee. Rise and shine, trog spawn. You think you can nip off for four months and not pay what you owe the tribe? So we were out for four months, and they're the very blood price is sacred. You can't just shrug off that responsibility. So the plot price is where my ancestors messed up, and I have to pay, pay a debt tax for their mess. If I don't see the money from you by the time I count to ten, you'll regret you ever came home. Okay, you know I can't pay it. All my money we made in Orishi is at the bottom of the bay because, hello, shipwreck. Yeah, you were on that ship too, weren't you? How many lives must your family be responsible for destroying before <laughs> enough is enough? Whoa, you just say how it is, don't you? Um, this doesn't change the fact that I have no money right now and can't pay you. Or you can say, stop this right now, you're being unreasonable. Don't make this violent. If you can't make the payments you missed, we will seize your home! Okay, they actually will do that. So, um, you're gonna have to pay one way or another if you want to Twelve keep your home. Twelve people are dead. Stop this shameful behavior at once. To threaten someone like this while the lost lives are still fresh is an insult to their memory. Absolutely true. But, Chamber Lady Aberdeen... I said that is enough! If you want to resume discussions after the mourning period, feel free. Oliel, see these people off, would you? You heard, Mother. Away with you, or I will personally see to it that you get double shifts of guard duty. I'm sorry that was the first thing you woke up to. Please forgive them. All right. Many of them have lost family so, and are not thinking straight. Basically, we have now a, fr a period, that a cooldown period that we have to pay the debt. I can't believe they want to seize my home, can't if do If I could anything. do more, I would. 
The most I can do for you is declare a mourning period and buy you a little time. That gives you a few days to pay back the money. Either gather the money or earn a tribal favor and they won't be able to touch you. All right, so that's the two choices we have. Either five days to come up with 150 silver or to earn a tribal favor. And we're going to do the latter because I know how to do that, which is actually a lot easier and a lot more hassle-free because you can use the money that you earn to buy some really useful things. All right, once you leave the lighthouse, um, you're out in your town. So this is the town's map. And as you can see, we can't see our character on it. Not there. And that is because the game's map doesn't actually want you to know where you are by looking at the map. It wants you to pay attention to your surroundings. It wants you to look at uh, landmarks. You know, the lighthouse is here. The, there's a building up there. There's a building ahead. We're going down a hill. So it kind of wants you to really pay attention to where you are. And I suppose like in real life, get to know the ways to certain areas yeah which is actually a good idea so far i thought i would have a lot more problems i have an awful sense of direction and so far i actually had no problems uh, i'm very surprised actually there's a building up here that we want to check out which is the town's hall let's actually pick up these berries along the way as well always good to pick up berries and pick up everything you find. There's um, an axe here which we can sell, which is good money in the beginning. And seeing that we can keep the money, which is very good. Going into the town's hall now, uh, this stage of the game shows you nothing in it, which is great. So we can actually go right in to the one thing I'm interested in, which is the chest here. And we can open it and it gives you random items. So, oh wow, look at that. A dark rich attire, very good. Astral Potion, Potion which instantly restores mana. We don't really have mana at this point, so I could probably sell that and make some money. Uh, Mineral Tea, a concoction that increases impact res resistance. So I, again, impact, I think, is the whole idea of impact resistance means how much more it will take for somebody to damage you or to hit you before you lose your balance. That fifth, that white line on the bottom in the middle, when it goes to 50, remember, you kind of stagger. And then you have to continue fighting. And then if you get down to zero, you fall over and things can jump you and attack you until you get back up and you get a new fresh bar. And you're going to see that on enemies a lot more like on, and then on your person because usually you don't get yourself in that much trouble or you try not to. And this is very good. It actually restores burnt health. Now, what burnt health or burnt stamina is referring to is after a while of running around, some of your stamina goes dark yellow and it's basically lowering the maximum cap of your stamina. So say you can have 200 stamina maximum, after a while you can only have 180 and 20 goes dark yellow. This is burnt stamina. In this case, this is talking about burnt health, which I don't know exactly how it works, but I think the more you get hit, eventually some of your health just becomes unhealable until you either sleep or do something like that, take something like that with you to recover the burnt health. So we're definitely going to take that with us. That will definitely come in handy. We are in the town hall, so which is here. So we literally walked all the way here now. And that was very quick. So you can see the map is not really that big. We can see right in front of us, um, Helen, I believe. Helen Turnbull. So we're walking over here. We're going to talk to Helen now. Actually, before we talk to Helen, just so I don't forget it, there is a pitchfork here. So some items in the world are placed always in the same in the same locations, so which is good. It's kind of a mixed bag between fixed loot and random loot, which is nice. So we're gonna talk to Helen. The reason Greetings, we talk to Helen is, is she has a job for us that she will pay us for. I'm here about work. Lend me your ear. I'm looking for something I can do As nearby. As a matter of fact, I could use a brush explorer for something. Well, if it pays good, I'm willing to put my life in danger. Is what I need. So she needs a rare mushroom in the shape of a shield, which she believes grows in the Blister Boroughs, northeast of Sirzo. So we are now in Sirzo in the, in the town, and we have to go outside the town to go to Blister Boroughs, which is actually the first dungeon, I believe. And um, that's where we can get the You'll shield. know it if you find it. It's an immense size and red color. Bring me that mushroom and I pay 70 silver for it. Well, that's good. It sounds like an adventure I do it. Perfect. Make sure you have a good weapon, a lantern, and plenty of supplies. So right here by the gate, um, we have a traveling merchant, which always seems to be here in the beginning of the game anyway. I don't know if he's ever not there, but he's not on the map marked, but he's here, that little wagon here. And here we can start Greetings, selling friend. some of the things we don't want. We can also talk to him, but he has nothing really well, to my say. Friend. Um, so we, there's Greetings, no quest or anything. Friend. 
so we say we want to buy something and here we can see we can sell him the fishing harpoon which actually we're going to do because there's another one we can get we can sell him the pitchfork we can sell him that i'm also going to sell him this dark rich attire because i'm not going to use it and i'm going to sell him the two mana potions because i'm not going to use them either and that means we're already getting 60 silver which is really good because we need some of that money now here's the alchemist um helmy the alchemist right beside the inn on the kind of the back side of the inn hey there and helmy the alchemist has other items so you can all they all have something to sell like i don't know what some of these items are or a lot of these items are but you can buy the tea for example like that gives you back burnt health you can get burnt burnt mana this one is burnt stamina so you can actually buy a lot of those teas just uh, to deal with um you know stamina and health and all that which is really really good so and they're very cheap they only eight silver so definitely worth uh, buying a few of them at some point when you have the spare money she also has recipes for alchemy now you need an alchemy kit which i don't know yet what it looks like or how to get one because the alchemy kit is what you need to craft potions and all that and i know how to make the campfire kit there's actually there is an alchemy kit for 60 silver I'm not going to buy this actually now. Tools used to distill ingredients into potions to be used on a lit campfire. So it's like a cooking pot you put on a campfire. That is actually pretty awesome. Now, she has bandages, which is always good. And I'm going to buy them actually because that is six silver I'm going to pay. And that's two bandages right there. Oh, and obviously you hey want there. to talk to her because she has a quest. Is the plan. Now, she says that she's running a little low on crystal powder if I could get her some. Now, crystal powder, hey, I listen. think is made in the alchemy kit so we need to buy the alchemy alchemy kit from her because i don't think we can craft one and she wants us to blend four mana stones in the alchemy kit to make the powder for her so let's talk to the local blacksmith what um, can i do for you when we talk to the local blacksmith well, we can't really talk to him but uh, he can give you different um, information about how to treat your gear how to look after your gear how to repair it so that's all the conversation pieces there but one of the things that he has is when you say craft me something here's what i need and that shows you three possible um recipes a helmet armor or boots where you need blue sand for now i know where to get blue sand from that's not the problem money is the problem really i don't really have that money but not yet anyway and i don't really know what that armor does or actually is good for but i'm intrigued and not only that by not doing it because we don't have the money right now or the sand we can see that it was added as a quest as a side quest into our journal so that is very interesting. It says, uh, Tsiaso Smith can craft pieces of blue sand armor if blue sand is brought to him. So what is blue sand armor? Is that in any significance to anything? Is it giving us a little bonus about something? That I don't know. I have no idea. But it's definitely something I want to do because it's a side quest and usually all of them have kind of a purpose. So it would be good to see what that armor actually does. So if we go up here, we're going to get some recipes for free, which is awesome. There we go. And we learn them, and that allows us to craft now gear, which is really important. So some of the gear I want to craft, and that's why I didn't want the chest. It actually, this rope, or whatever it is, and we can craft, now allows us to craft and has an extra five uh, carry bonus on the pouch. An extra five kilos. That is awesome. That is one pickaxe you can carry for free. So we're going to talk to the um, chef here. Now, this is where we were. We talked to the Loud Hammer. We went up the stairs here, over here where we got the recipes. And now we're going to talk to the Master Chef. Can I help you? So the Master Chef, again, check out what he has to, st to sell. He actually sells a lot of items and some food, some dishes. And he also has travel rations. Very good, actually. Travel rations we get into later. We don't really need to worry about them right now. And he has a lot of recipes. Actually, he has a recipe for some of the teas that we that would be very good for us interesting but we're not going to buy that what we do buy though is we're going to buy one of the fish because we need that now for quest he's going to give us well we need more than the fish but it's the only thing we need to buy that i don't know how to get without can buying. i help you um i like to talk can you lend me a hand so he wants me to make him food from a recipe, the Chirzo Chivich. Remember the recipe we found in our house in the basement? That is what he wants us to cook for him because my parents used to cook it for him all the time and he would love us to do it for him. So we say yes. Yes. And um, we need a rainbow trout, some seaweed and some sea salt. Now right here beside um, the chef, you have some trainers. 
It's the Kazite trainer. So this is the Kazite and Amber, my friend. You can see here. I want to train with you. We like to talk. Curious. He doesn't want to talk. Let's see if she wants to talk. Or he wants to talk. I don't what know. What can I do for you? I wonder. Okay, so there's nothing here. Um, if we talk what to him and say I want I to train. What can I do for you? Yes, I can teach you a little Kazai trick. I can teach you a way to use 100 axe to cripple and slow your enemies. Is 50 silvers a fair price? And I'm going to say not now. Okay, so here we can actually learn an axe skill. That's interesting. And that would be one of those skills you saw earlier. Um, right here that you then can assign to one of your quick slots. Um, but we're not going to fight with an axe. Even though an axe is actually a very good starting weapon, but we have a sword. Let's um, train. And we can see he has actually things available. Now, my resources are that I have three points, whatever they are to spend, but I have only 69 silver, so I don't have enough silver to learn anything here. Well, I could spend 50 silver to increase my maximum health and the amount of health restored while sleeping, or I could increase the impact resistance by 15 while I'm blocking, which means the white bar, as I block, is impacted less. So, um, which is obviously good. And then you can have a shield charge as well if you want, that's a skill, but you need in total 150 silver, which we don't have. So we're gonna have to remember that though and come back to that because I think shield and uh, 100 weapon is something I want to do. So it's nighttime now and at night it gets really, really, really dark. So always have a light with you. Now, what is that? Is that something we can pick up? A little wheel? No, okay. So right here is a junk pile. Always check that. Again, random things in it. Um, oh, we have actually some good boots. And we have a bit of wood that we can pick up. And I don't think there's much more here. There's another vendor here you could use to um, Greetings, friend. buy that rainbow trout. Um, or you can buy a harpoon from him, but we get another harpoon now in a second. Or you can buy some seaweed. So if you're stuck for any of the recipes you learned in the beginning, you can talk to him and he will sort you out. Um, I don't know if there's anything else here. Let me just double check. I have actually never checked the back here. Is that a guy we can talk to? Oh, yes. Oh, I did talk to him what before. What brings you here? Well, Izan's alive. There's more than that. So that's Roland. That's uh, Izan's brother, actually. Yeah, a shame about the shipwreck. Uh, accidents like this happen all the time. Well, not if the lighthouse is lit. Who was on duty that night? Not a clue. It wasn't me, though. That's for sure. Shouldn't you be helping your brother salvage the wreck? Oh, no, I don't think he wants my help. Oh, this is the worst day I've had in forever. <laughs> you had a bad day, Genie Mac. All right. There's something glowing in the back here. Let's see what that is. All right. It's actually a shield. Nice. So we got a free shield. That is pretty awesome. I like that. So now shield and torch um, can't be used at the same time, obviously. So one of the things you can, for example, do is you can put the torch in your inventory here for a second so that it's available. And then you can go into your skills and say, okay, I want in three, I want to have my torch. And in four, or in four, I want to have my torch. And in three, I want to have my shield. So now that means I can swap between the two of them. So if we get into a fight, I can quickly swap, we can fight, and um, then we can quickly swap back if we need to. There's one more person I want to talk to, which is the shopkeeper Doran. And I went last there because I need coins for that shopkeeper. Is there something you need? So first we're going to talk to the shopkeeper. Can you help with this? Yeah, so are you planning to pass by Burke sometime? So Burke is a town in the next region over, in one of the next regions over, and... Yeah, he's just asking me if I can hand something over this. Excellent. So, yeah, we deliver it. Don't worry about it. Because at some point, we're going to go to Burke. Now, let's check what the person has. And when you look at what they're selling, they're actually selling a backpack, which is better than what we have. We have a satchel, but he's selling a Nomad backpack, which is absolutely fantastic. So by buying that with the money we have, Let's confirm the transaction. We can, I think, I don't know if we can swap them out. Can we swap them out? Okay, we can equip it. Then we can open, take all the stuff from the floor. But the good thing is now we can take a light source, like a lantern, and put it into our backpack and it automatically will dangle from the backpack and give us light. Now we're also gonna buy um, the linen 
uh, the vendor has and for convenience I'm gonna buy the salt okay we can make salt ourselves very easily but for convenience I'm just gonna uh, buy the salt and we're gonna buy the thick oil that he has so that's only 19 silver in total so we confirm the transaction and that's it the reason we want to buy the oil is we can take a lantern and craft it together with the oil to refill the lantern which is really handy so and that's everybody spoken to now let's worry about um, the back of the map here which is talking to Izan then we're gonna go to the water purifier to get our free water pouch and some fish actually also and then we're going to talk to the gatekeeper the warden i wish i could greet you with a smile but well how are you holding up yesterday i was leading our most ambitious expedition in a decade now all that's left is this wreck and a tribe in mourning how did your ship sink so close to home the lighthouse wasn't lit at the time we made impact with the rocks I'm certain. We lost everyone who was below the deck at the time of the accident. Now, this is a funny option here. Um, in the end of the conversation with I Izan, you can basically say, hey, I want my money back. Hand it over or I'll beat, you, beat it out of you. He will give you money. He gets a little bit annoyed with you, but he will get over it from what I heard. But he will give you money. And it's not a little bit of money. It's quite a lot of money. So, But we, I don't care about that because we're going to do the tribal favor and we're going to earn our own money. It's going to be fine. Actually, I do have a small stash of goods I hid in case of disaster. So he says he hid a small stash of goods near the old shipwreck to the south. When you open it, remember that the moon commands the stars. You'll know what I mean. So, okay, a little puzzle. No idea what he means. I'm sure he wouldn't have given us that hint or whatever if we would have asked him for money. Let's go over here and we can find a pouch here now with clean, fresh water. It's actually a water skin which has already fresh water in it. And we can drink fresh water here as well. Very good. There we go. Nice. And then if we head over here, there's nothing else we can pick up here on top or anything. But over here, we can pick up another harpoon. That's why it was okay to sell the other one. There we go. And once you have a harpoon, you can go to where these fish are in the water and gather fish. If you don't have a harpoon, he won't do anything. And, oh, look at that. We got blue sand. That's very rare, actually. Out of all the times I played the beginning of the game, I never got blue sand. That's the first time, actually. And there's another pool of fish right here somewhere. There we go. And there's a third one as well somewhere. So you usually you get fish, which is really good, because you can use that to make some uh, traveling food, which we need later on. I think that's pretty much it. For here so let's go and worry about settling that favor there's actually more fish here there we go i knew there was a third one now before we're gonna head out to talk to the person we or to go to the person we need to go to to get the favor to save ourselves a lot of money we're gonna talk to the warden here need because something? he when we tell him we go outside whatever weapon we have uh, currently equipped he will teach us a skill for us so we're gonna say yes because of the machete equipped there you go. And he will teach us Mastering puncture has skills been learned. is the key to survival out in the wild. So we're going to go here into our setup and we're going to apply the skill. There we go. A 100 sword close combat attack which deals high damage and impact and inflicts pain. So that's very good. So we can do a kick, we can do a smash with the sword and basically finish off anybody if we would want to. And now we're ready for combat. That's as far as I think you can push it with your setup. Now you can buy a bow, you can buy a different type of weapon if you want to and get him to do that. I tried bow in a separate kind of rinse and repeat of the start, but that didn't work out as well because I needed to carry around a lot of arrows. I constantly need to worry about crafting arrows. I don't want to do this right now in the beginning of the game. I just want to go and do the beginning and um, the backpack does help out a lot though. So we're gonna head into here, which is the Sirzo storage, which is basically right here at the end of the pier. So we get to the storage house at 2.33. So that is still very early morning. So let's see if we can get very quickly to the beach. So there's a lantern here, for example, and you can see it's actually hanging on our back, which is awesome. So we don't need this. There we go, we can put that in our pocket. We don't care. And that will give us light, which is absolutely amazing. I don't know how much light it gives us when we're in the total darkness, but it seems to be giving us a good bit of light. So we don't have to worry about anything. Here's an improvised bedroll as well. We're going to pick up the bread. I don't need to disassemble it. I have a bread roll on me. Over here, we have the Garberry's Jam. So we already know this now. So if we look at this, it says already known because we learned it by doing 
which um, means we could sell it. I don't know if it's worth anything, but we could sell it. We don't need to read it right now. We're actually hungry, so there's two things I want to do. You see the stamina loss? I want. I bought a bitter spiced tea for uh, eight silver, so we're going to drink that, and that should get rid of some of the... Actually, got rid of all of that. Very nice. And then what we're going to do is we're going to eat... Um, what do we have to eat? We actually <laughs> we actually don't have anything major. So let's um, eat the berries. I suppose that will do for now. We could have cooked um, the food first and then hunt in the quest and then take the leftover food with us. But I don't want to do this right now because I want to try to get to the beach um, very quickly. Now here's another mining pick we can pick up. And which is good. Of course, I'm going to leave it in the backpack. We can sell it or we can deconstruct it into materials. And let's get our shield out. Actually, we have to take our shield out. There we go. And we can use the shield now to block instead of our weapon. So there's two um, guys down here that we can fight. One of them is just going down this corridor, and I don't know where the other one is, but let's go down into this corner here first. Again, there's no map in here, so you have to kind of remember where you're going. Oh, we got a gravel beetle added, actually, which is very good. We're going to eat that because the gravel beetle does give us um, protection from impact. So if we look at our buffs, we can see impact resistance 25%. So one of the guys is showing up there. Okay, here we go. We have our shield. Okay. okay, we can kick him now and then do the straight away the big attack. And that's it. So he's done now. You can see his uh, gray line was gone. Here's the next one. He hit us once though. So kick, big attack, and then we can see straight away the gray line is gone. So. Between those two attacks, we pretty much destroy these guys. Now, we can loot them. Oh, we get some money. Very good. I like that. Um, now, we could take the troglodyte trident. I don't know if it's actually worth anything. I just know that we can't destroy it. So, we take that. Um, we can't scrap it. So, if we go into here, we can't select it to be scrapped. So, we can't get materials from it. But we might be able to sell it. I don't know. Anyway, that's the only two guys in here. And... This will simply just walk around in a circle over to the other side here, where we came from. There you can see we would have come from here. And this here will get to a point where we get a mushroom. And then we can go back. And now we can go to the beach from here. And that's important that we go to the beach. Now, you won't be able to come back through this cave. If you go this direction you will be forced to walk outside around again to come back home. So let's read this. Danger going forward will strand you in the wilderness until you make your way back. But that's okay. For what we want to do, that's perfect. And here we are on the beach. Now, it's already morning, 4 a.m., so it's still nighttime. Let's pick up the seaweed. And let's run down the beach. I hope we can avoid... There's a monster on the beach as well. I hope we can avoid it. There's actually another fish pool we can get them in a second and over there by the big rock is where you want to go and I don't see the monster oh that's good is the monster not there oh that's brilliant so this is the guy we want to talk to talking to Michael Aberdeen I can't move so a pistol shrimp got me Michael Aberdeen obviously must be related to Rissa Aberdeen, so we're gonna tell them, hey, we have a bandage, don't worry about a thing. It's working. Oh, thank you, Lord. And I'm not going to die here. Thanks. Because of that, he gave us now a tribal fa favor. So his aunt Rissa is make sure to get the tribal favor. I don't think I'm fit to run back home just yet. Nah, you take your time, dude. Just watch the big monsters here. Now we got a tribal favor. And that means we're sorted now. You see this big guy? You see the blue sparkles on the sand? That is blue sand. That's You want to pick that up when you find it. However, what I want to do really quickly, and I don't know if it's too early or too late already, is I want to get into this cave here that is on the beach. So basically, we are down here at the beach right now. This is where the city is, where we came from. Going through the tunnel lets us out here, and this is where we are right now. So going into this cave here at the daytime, let's see if we actually made it in time. Let's have a look. That's only something I found by coincidence. Yes. 
good. So we have to be very careful here. Now, the reason I was rushing this is the water levels will rise here at a certain time. And we have to be careful. So we can go down here right now and we can pick up the blue sand. And there's more of these monsters, so we just have to be careful and stay out of their way. There is um, some more seaweed, but what we here for is the blue sand. There's three blue sand down here, which is actually plus the one on the beach. That's four blue sand you can get your hands on straight away. And you can either sell them for a good penny. I think they're worth 40 silver each. They're, oh, we got some sea salt here as a byproduct. Oh, crap. Quick, 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 quick. Okay, if we stay behind it, we might be able to loot this. Oh, balls. Okay, he got us. He got us right in the face. So we're going to run out. <laughs> we're not, we got the blue. We didn't get the... Ow! Whoa! Did you see how that knocked us down? Okay, so what we could do is... We could see if we get the loot by luring him up here. And then quickly jumping down. He doesn't actually know where we are. Okay, quick, 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 quick. There we go. Take all. And now we can hide here. So we could play a little bit of chicken here. Let's actually see if we can use a bandage to heal up a little bit. Oh, look, he doesn't see us. We actually were able to completely elude him. That is amazing. So these guys are pretty hardcore at the moment, and I can't fight them yet. Um, I probably could, if, you know, you can, but I don't think my armor is good enough to do it. So, let's run. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, dude. The reason I was rushing is, um, at a certain time of day is the only time you can get in there. At night, usually, when it's still nighttime. In the morning, the tide will come in and everything is underwater. So you can't go in there. So it's definitely something to explore a little bit further. So we made it. It's still 5 o'clock. I think, I don't know if it's 6 a.m., but at some point, this will fill up with water inside. So when you go in, you can just see a big pool of water and that's it. So I'm really glad that we made it, even if it meant we got a little bit damaged. So let's go out here and see if we can. Yep, now we can mine this. That's where I want to go here. Now to get back is actually pretty straightforward. We just have to hope that there's no hyena. So if we look at the map, we're kind of here and we're gonna go up here that path, then turn left. Actually, we only go up here, turn left. We're gonna go around here and then we're gonna head back to the town. Um, on the way, there's three things that I like to check out. There is a hollow tree trunk here. Excellent, we don't need that um, board, but we're gonna take the potion. We're gonna take the stability portion. And what do we have here? A recipe. Ooh, what recipe was that? Fang Greatsword. Oh, wow. A greatsword. Can we see how we can craft this? A Fang Greatsword. Look at that. Nice. You need a steel sword, some bones. Wow, is that a two-handed sword, though? I think that might be a two-handed sword. Yeah, I wouldn't want to fight with two hands. I think I want to go with a nice one, fast one-hander and a nice shield. I think I can make bone shields as well. I saw the recipes, actually, for the Fang version of a one-hander weapon. There we go. So let's stick to the left side of the mountain until we get around. And then there's two more places. Ah, there's hyenas. Okay, so that can get a bit tricky. Ooh, okay. Let's see if we can avoid them. That would probably be best. So these hyenas are all the way there where I came from. So hopefully I can kind of sneak away behind them now. That would be really good. They seem to be far enough away. So let's keep running here to the right hand side of the mountain. And I think we're safe. Excellent. So one thing you want to do is when you get up this path here. Let's make sure we don't have the hyenas there. And I can show you the map. We are literally coming up here now. And there's a little path here. Sorry, we're coming up. Here now, and there's a little path here to the left, and this is the one we're taking now. There's another chest, or there's another thing we can pick up, and these things usually have a lot of times trap wires, spikes for traps, all that stuff. I don't actually know how trap wires and traps work. Um, we have to play around with that at some point. Um, I think you can place them on the ground, and then either you walk over it. I don't know if you get caught in them, or you get your prey to walk over it after when it's chasing you, and then they get 
trapped in it and die. I don't know if it does a certain amount of damage. I have no idea. Now, we're going to continue to run across here. Now, before we're going to go to our gate, which is here on the left-hand side, we're going to take a small detour. And the only reason we're going to do that small detour is so we don't have to worry about bringing along a lot of nonsense with us later. So if we go just literally up here by the wall, there's a little stone wall that's been built. Similar to the one we just saw a second ago. And that also has a chest. So if we literally just here on top of that. There you go. There's another chest. And that's literally right in front of the entrance. Uh, which is right there. Beside the mountain. And there we go. And you find more. Oh, scrap iron. Very good. Incinerary stuff. Um, well, don't give me incinerary stuff. And some bullets. Excellent. So actually, just to show you this, how this works with the combat, when you take your bag off, I can press B. It will take my bag off. And then I can fight this bird much better. Kick it. Smack it. There you go. It's down. Excellent. <sighs> Got some meat from it. Very good. Like it. Now we just have to remember where we dropped our bag. And pick it up. There we go. Nice. And that's it. We got it back on us. Because our bag is slightly overweight. Of course, if your bag is overweight, you can always move something into your pockets. And then your bag isn't overweight anymore. But, again, it doesn't really make a difference. So let's enter the town and hand in our favor. So we're debt free. And um, before we hand in the favor, though, um, let's see if we can Greetings, sell those friend. tridents. Oh, we can actually. Look at that. That's nice. Beautiful. Well, I'm going to keep that. But it's very, very nice that we can actually sell them. That is so cool. So here we go. Back in the town hall, which is just up the hill here. We're talking to Risa. And we say, Greetings. Boy. How go your efforts? I want to talk about the plot price. You have price. a way to make that payment. Yes, I earned to try Show the me. favor. And on time, too. I'm impressed. Yeah, there you go. Well done. Sierzo thanks you for your great deed. Oliel and Izan are leaving Sierzo. Why are they leaving Sierzo? You should speak with them before they go. Okay. What do you mean they're leaving? Oliel is leaving to go join the holy mission of Elat. Um, damn, I miss her around here. As will we all. Um, I don't suppose you could convince her to stay. <laughs> She's my only daughter. No, I'm not going to. She has her own mind. And Izan, why is he leaving? He can't be ready for another expedition already. A blood price has been declared upon his bloodline. So, the shipwreck that killed so many of our people and nearly took your life was the fault of Izan's brother, Roland. What? How, how can you be sure? <sighs> Roland fell asleep on duty. This is unacceptable. So Roland accepts the consequences of his actions. Izan refuses. Well, Izan had nothing to do with it. He has chosen to exile himself from Cieso forever, rather than do his duty to the tribe and bear the blood price. Well, I don't think he has anything to do with it. That was his brother's fault. This isn't fair. I understand punishing Roland, but why Izan? The blood price must be levied against an entire bloodline. So because his brother messed up, he has to pay the price now. Otherwise, the one who bears it would be pushed to act selfishly rather than repay what is owed to the tribe. Against a line, it can be held for as long as it needs to, as long as it needs to. Against an individual, it promotes only bloodshed. Yeah, well, what is if you don't have anybody else? If you, if you would have no brother, then it's still an individual. So uh, it doesn't make any difference. The blood price is not a punishment. Well, it is for the people that are not actually involved in it or are forced to be involved in it. It is repayment for wrong. Well, I don't really... Well, let's agree to disagree. Come back once you've said your goodbyes to them. I'm going to leave this episode here, guys. That was really good. This is pretty much as far as I played. Now, there is a little bit more. I went already to the first dungeon and we're going to do that next time. And this episode is very long, probably, because we went into pretty much everything right from the start. Anything I knew, anything that I kind of discovered to share with you. And um, future episodes, I think the next one, we're going to do the dungeon. And then we're going to talk to the guys. And then everything is new territory for me. So, which means we might have more edits and more cuts in between things per episode, um, in the, in each episode, because I have to obviously figure things out for myself, you know, before I can actually show you them on the video, and um, go from there. But there's a main story we're gonna follow. But we have to talk to the two guys um, to continue this. But for now, I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna empty everything. I'm gonna go to sleep, and cook some meals, 
and take a nap in my bed to refresh my stamina and my health. And then we're going to talk to each other. Anyway, I hope you guys had a good time with the episode. If you did, remember to kick that like button in the balls. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Until then, as always, viel Spaß and happy gaming.